Hola estudiantes, hoy vamos a practicar la pronunciación del idioma español. So basically what we're doing today is practicing um, Spanish pronunciation, starting with the most basic unit of the language, which is the letters of the alphabet. Um, we have gone over the names of the letters and um, so today we're going to talk about what sounds those letters make and then we're going to start putting different letters together to make syllables and then eventually syllables together to make words and um, then you can just keep building so words become sentences become paragraphs become entire stories and this is how you build your fluency in a foreign language so what we're going to start off today is a focus on the five vowels in spanish okay um, this can be a little bit confusing because some of them have names that sound like an English vowel, but it's not the same English vowel except for the letter O. That's the easy one. So, you know the five vowels in English are A, E, I, O, U. In Spanish, these are called A, E, I, O, U. Try it with me. A, E, I, O, U. Okay, if you don't have it down yet, don't worry, you'll have lots of opportunities to practice. As we go through this video, anytime I ask you to repeat after me or try it with me, I really, really want you to do that. The whole purpose of this activity is for you to get practice with the pronunciation, not just for you to listen to me practicing my pronunciation. All right, let's get started. As I mentioned, the five vowels are A, E, I, O, U. I have a little song that I like to use with the vowels to help with pronunciation and to help you start forming these syllables. So the song sounds like this. Las vocales en español, las vocales en español, a, e, i, o, u. Then we can start taking consonants and putting them together with the vowels um, to form syllables. And here's what that sounds like. La L con la A dice la, la L con la E dice le, con la I dice li, con la O dice lo, la L con la U dice lu, la le li lo lu. Okay, so we can do that with the L, but we can do it with other consonants as well. Let's jump in and try some more syllables. All right, so knowing that our five vowels are A, E, I, O, U, let's put some other consonants with them. First, let's do the M, A. It's super easy because it makes the same sound in uh, Spanish that it does in English. So these five syllables would be ma, me, mi, mo, mu. Give it a try. Ma, me, mi, mo, mu. Good job. Now we're going to try some consonants that are a little different than what we're used to in English. The first one is enye. Now when you make the sound of the enye, it's kind of like putting an N and a Y together. So this one sounds a little bit awkward, but the sound is nya, which makes our five syllables nya, nye, ni, nyo, nyu. Give it a try. Good. Do you guys remember when you were in probably first grade, you learned that the letter C and the letter G have a hard and a soft sound? Um, if you don't remember that, they do. And the same is true in Spanish as well. So in Spanish, the letter C can make the K sound or it can make the S sound, okay? And it follows kind of the same rules as English. So if the letter C is in front of A, O, or ooh, it's going to make the hard k sound. If it's in front of a or e, it's going to make the soft s sound. So that makes these five syllables on your screen ka, se, si, ko, ku. Give it a try. Good. There are ways to make the K and key sound, um, but instead of using the C with an E or an I, you use a Q U. Okay, so the letter Q in Spanish is called Q. It doesn't make a qu sound, it makes a k 
sound. So the two syllables on the right side of your screen now are K and Ki. All right, so we talked about ka, se, si, koku. Now, something interesting about the Spanish language, um, this will kind of sound familiar because English is similar. Um, the letter S also makes the s sound. So the five syllables in the center of the screen now are, say them with me, sa, se, si, so, su. Okay, now here's what's a little bit different. Um, in Spanish, the letter seta, which in English we call a Z, also makes the S sound. So the five syllables on the far right side of the screen are sa, se, si, so, su. Now we talked about the hard C and the soft C. Um, we have also the hard G and the hard and the soft G. In Spanish, this letter is called he, and its sounds are g or h. Okay, so our five syllables here are ga, he, he, go, gu. Try it with me. Ga, he, he, go. Gu, okay? Kind of like we could use the Q to make the syllables K and Ki. We can also make the syllables G and Gi, but we have to add a U to help the G make a hard sound. So G and Gi are spelled like this. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. Um, if you use the letter Hota, which in English we call a J. If you use hota with the vowels, it makes the sound just like the soft hey. So on the far right side of your screen, think of the word jalapeno, or maybe you have a friend named Jose. So you're familiar with the fact that sometimes the letter hota or J uh, makes that H sound. So let's try the five syllables on the far right side. Ready? Do it with me. Ha, he, he, Ho, hu. Good job. Now these five syllables using the letter H, which in English we call H, um, they're not going to be pronounced the way they look to you. If you've been speaking English your whole life, you might think these are ha, he, he, ho, hu, but they're not. Those were the syllables we formed with the letter J, the J. These are going to be a, e, i, o, u. Sounds just like the vowels, right? Well, that does because the letter H, or the Spanish H, is silent. Okay, we call it la letra muda, the mute letter, the letter that makes no sound. So, this one's easy. Try it with me. A, E, I, O, U. Good job. The doble L, or EY, or EJ, has lots of different names. It depends on which country you are visiting. Um, but generally, the two sounds are either Y or J. So let's try these syllables first with the Y sound. Do it with me. Ya, ye, yi, yo, you. Okay, and then our fancy schmancy sound. Do it with me. Ja, j, j, jo, ju. You can use either one, whichever you feel more comfortable with. As far as I'm concerned, you're pronouncing it correctly with um, whichever of the two you decide to use. And la letra Y, the Spanish letter that looks like an English Y, is the same way. Depending on which country you're in, sometimes it makes um, a Y sound and other times it makes more of a J sound. So let's try both again, starting with the Y sound. Do it with me. Ya, ye, yi, yo, you. Okay, and then using the other sound, the j sound, do it with me. Ja, je, ji, jo, ju. Okay, muy bien, clase. One of the quickest and easiest ways to become fluent is to study cognates. In Spanish, these are called cognados. Basically, a cognate is a word in one language that looks and sounds a lot like a word in another language and it also has the same meaning. So if you can kind of learn some cognates and start to learn these word patterns, um, it can make it 
easier and quicker for you to become fluent. So we're going to just practice our pronunciation with some cognates. Um, we're not going to go over the meanings of these words because I think you can figure out what they mean. Okay, so as we go through these cognates, or in Spanish, cognados, I would like you to simply repeat after me, and we're going to go fairly quickly, um, so do your best to keep up. Okay, practicamos con estas palabras. Hospital, your turn. Medical, animal, casual. Digital. Good. Let's try some words with a different pattern. Remember, I'm saying it first and you're repeating after me. Acto. Exacto. Correcto. Insecto. Good. Let's try another pattern. Curioso. Delicioso, glorioso, misterioso. Good, let's try another pattern. Ambulancia, Francia, distancia, tolerancia. Good, let's try another pattern. Básico, fantástico, genérico, médico. Good. Another pattern. Familiar, muscular, regular, solar. Lunar. Good. Let's try another pattern. Diario. Glosario. Primario. You're doing a great job. Let's keep going. Distante. Elegante. Importante. Audible, cable, terrible, horrible. Muy bien, clase. Continuamos. Coincidencia, competencia, diferencia, excelencia. Ácido, fluido, rápido, sólido, válido. I think this is our last set. Argumento, cemento, departamento, documento. Elemento. Now, the next thing I want to address really quickly is false cognates, or in Spanish we call them cognados falsos. So it's really great when you see a word in Spanish and you're like, oh, I can figure that out because it looks like the English word. Sometimes we have some rule breakers and those are false cognates. So there are some words that kind of look like an English word and you might think you know what it means, but then it has a completely different meaning. And so those are kind of tricky and it's good to kind of familiarize yourself with some of them. Um, for example, carpeta, you might think that word means carpet, but it actually means folder. Another example, idioma. Um, looks like it might mean idiom, but that's how you say language. Éxito, our first thought might be, okay, that probably means exit, but it doesn't. It means success. 
Here's a really good one for you guys to know, embarazada. When you see this word, you might think that it means embarrassed, but it actually means pregnant. So that's a really good one to know the difference because you don't want to be telling a story and tell, trying to tell someone that you were so embarrassed, but you accidentally say, oh, I was so pregnant. So that's a good one to be familiar with. Um, this poster of the Spanish and English false friends or false cognates is on the back bulletin board in our classroom if you want to take a look at it sometime. Um, it's kind of fun to look at false cognates just because um, it's good to know that sometimes what a word looks like isn't exactly what it means. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and this practice on pronunciation. Hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit more confident saying some words in Spanish. Um, we will, of course, be doing lots and lots more practice, and if you have any questions, let me know.